Hi everyone, welcome to MLT MCQ and Notes. This is a fifth part video of important multiple choice questions and answers discussion from MLT. First question, the most useful method for obtaining discrete colonies of the bacteria is by Option A, stab culture. Option B, lawn culture. Option C, pore plate culture. Option D, streak culture. Answer is Option D, streak culture. In streak culture, we will get discreted colonies or isolated colonies. That will be very useful for study of colony characters and morphology. Let's see other options. Stab culture. Stab culture which is used for urease like medium. Then lawn culture. Lawn culture also called carpet culture which is used to get uniform layer of bacterial growth. Which is used to get uniform layer of bacterial growth. Mainly used for antibiotic sensitivity testing. Then option C pore plate culture is also used for uh, to get uniform colonies mainly used for viable bacterial count pore plate culture mainly used for viable bacterial counting then second question the chart used to represent the quality of the analytical results reported by a laboratory option a pie chart option b pert chart option c log chart Option D. Levichening chart. Answer is Option D. Levichening chart. Levichening chart is a quality control chart and it is a graph that quality control data is plotted on which give a visual indication whether a laboratory test is working well. It is a quality control chart and it is a graphical representation that quality control data is plotted on it and which gives a visual indication whether a laboratory test is working well. The mean is measured in standard deviation. And let's go through other options. Pie chart. It is a circular statistical graph in which circle is divided into sectors. Then PERT chart is a project management tool used to schedule or and organize and coordinate task within project. Then log chart. It is a logarithmatic scale used on, on a chart that displaying numerical data over a very wide range of values in a compact way. Then third question. Pondic fever is caused by option A. Legionella. Option B. Listeria. Option C. Scrub typhus. Option D. Leptospira. Answer is option A. Legionella. Let's see other options. Listeria. In the case of Listeria, antitest test is very important. Listeriosis may get by eating contaminated food and water. In the case of pregnant women, the babies can get infection through placenta. Then option C. Scrub typhus. That is also called bush typhus, which is caused by Orientia susugamushi. Then option D, leptospira, which causes leptospirosis. Also called Wales disease, that spread, spread through urine of infected animals. Fourth question, the shelf life of world blood collected in ACD is dash days. Option A, 42 days. Option B, 35 days. Option C, 21 days. Option D, 15 days. Answer is Option C, 21 days. ACD, that is anticoagulant citrate dextrose solution. Acid citrate dextrose solution, which has 21 days the shelf life. Then CPD, that is citrate phosphate dextrose, it also have 21 days. Then CPDA, citrate phosphate dextrose adenine solution, it has shelf life is 35 days. Then sacum anticoagulant, that is a additive solution containing combination of saline, adenine, glucose and mannitol. Saline, adenine, glucose, mannitol, which has shelf life 42 days. 
Fifth option, Drapkin's solution contains Option A, cyan meth hemoglobin Option B, ferric ferrocyanate Option C, potassium ferricyanate Option D, cyanocobalamin Answer is Option C, potassium ferricyanate Drapkin's solution used to demonstrate hemoglobin from blood it contains potassium ferricyanate, potassium cyanate, potassium dihydrogen phosphate. Potassium ferricyanate oxidizes hemoglobin to methemoglobin and then cyan methemoglobin. Sixth question. The glycated amino acid residue in HbA1c is Option A. Proline Option B. Valine Option C. Cysteine Option D. Methionine Answer is Option B. Valine. HbA1c known as glucose memory test. Glucose memory test. It gives information about glycemic control over the last 120 days. In HbA1c, glucose binds to N-terminal valine residue of each beta chain of hemoglobin. In HbA1c, glucose binds to N-terminal valine residue of each beta chain of hemoglobin. Seventh question. Pseudomembranous enterocolitis is caused by Option A. Clostridium tetany Option B. Clostridium difficile Option C. Clostridium botulinum Option D. Clostridium perfringens Answer is Option B. Clostridium difficile Pseudomembranous enterocolitis, which is also called antibiotic associated colitis. It is the inflammation of the colon associated with an overgrowth of bacterium, Clostridium difficile. This infection is a common cause of diarrhea after antibiotic use. Antibiotic associated colitis, that is pseudomembranous colitis. It is the inflammation of the colon associated with an overgrowth of bacterium Clostridium difficile. This infection is a common cause of diarrhea after antibiotic use. Let's go through other options. Option A, Clostridium tetany, which causes tetanus. Then Clostridium botulinum, which causes botulism. Three types, that is Foodborne botulism, wound botulism, and infant botulism. Then Clostridium perfringens, which causes gas gangrene, and also food poison. Then Ethosia. Mass and Fontana method demonstrate option A amyloid, option B iron, option C melanin, option D calcium. Answer is option C melanin. Mass and Fontana method demonstrate melanin. Let's go through other options. Amyloid can be detected by Congoret method, Congoret staining. And Pearl's Christian Blue demonstrate iron. Then Vangosa method demonstrate calcium. Okay. Amyloid can be detected by Congoret method and iron can be detected by Pearl's Christian Blue. Then calcium can be detected by Vangosa method. The ninth question. The recommended glucose load for non-pregnant adults for doing an OGTT. OGTT stands for Oral Glucose Tolerance Test. Option A 75 gram. Option B 50 gram. Option C 100 gram. Option D 150 gram. Answer is option A 75 gram. OGTT is the confirmatory test for detecting diabetes mellitus. Here the glucose load is 75 gram anhydrous glucose in 250 to 300 ml of water. As per current WHO recommendation, three samples are collected, one at fasting, first hour and second hour post glucose load. Urine samples may also be collected along with these blood samples. A 2 hour GTT value over 200 mg per deciliter is confirmed as diabetes mellitus. A 2 hour GTT value over 200 mg per deciliter is confirmed case of diabetes mellitus. In GCT, the glucose load dose is 
50 gram GCT that is glucose challenging test is the simple test to detect gestational diabetes mellitus. 10th question. Hydrated fluid is sterilized by using Option A. Autoclave Option B. Filtration Option C. Hot air oven Option D. Inspiration Answer is Option B. Filtration Filtration used to sterilize heat sensitive fluids and air Hydrated fluid is a heat sensitive fluid Filtration helps to remove bacteria from heat label liquids such as sera and solutions of sugars or antibiotics used for preparation of culture media. Let's go through other options. Autoclave. In the case of autoclave, holding period is very important. It is 121 degrees Celsius for 50 minutes in 15 LBS. Then in the case of hot air oven, the holding period is 160 degrees Celsius for 1 hour. It is used to sterilize glass wires, forceps, scissors, scalpels and all glass syringes, swabs, then some pharmaceutical products such as liquid paraffin, dusting powder, fats and grease. Then inspissation. Inspissation is used to sterilize LJ medium and lawyer flesh serum slope. In inspissation, the sterilization is by heating at 80 to 85 degrees Celsius for half an hour on three successive days. The instrument used for inspissation is inspissator. Then 11th question. The length of windrobe hematocrit tube is dash millimeter. Option A 220 millimeter. Option B 200 millimeter. Option C 120 millimeter. Option D 110 millimeter. Answer is option D 110 millimeter. Windrobe tube is a narrow glass tube measuring 110 millimeter long with a graduation from 0 to 100 millimeter in both ascending and descending order. Windrobe tube is a narrow glass tube measuring 110 millimeter long with a graduation from 0 to 100 millimeter in both ascending and descending order. 12th question. Which of the following is not a liver fluke? Liver flukes are parasite that can infect humans and cause liver and bile duct disease. Option A. Clonorchis sinensis. Option B. Opistrochis viverni. Option C. Fasciola hepatica. Option D. Fasciolopsis buski. Answer is option D. Fasciolopsis buski. Fasciolopsis buski is a intestinal fluke which causes fasciolopsiasis. Fasciolopsiasis, which is the largest intestinal fluke of human. It is the largest intestinal fluke of human. Let's go through other options. Clonorchis sinensis, which is a Chinese liver fluke. Then Opistrochis viverni, which is a Southeast Asian liver fluke. Southeast Asian liver fluke. Then Fasciola hepatica. It is a common liver fluke. Thirteenth question. Beta oxidation of long chain fatty acids occurs in Option A. Cytoplasm Option B. Mitochondrial matrix Option C. Mitochondrial intermembrane space Option D. Golgi apparatus Answer is Option B. Mitochondrial matrix What is beta oxidation? That is Two carbon atoms are removed in the form of acetyl-CoA from acyl-CoA at the carboxyl terminal. Beta oxidation is the two carbon atoms are removed in the form of acetyl-CoA. Two carbon atoms are removed in the form of acetyl-CoA from acyl-CoA at the carboxyl terminal. The bond is broken between the second carbon or beta carbon and third carbon or gamma carbon hence the name beta oxidation the bond broken between the second carbon and third carbon 
the second carbon also called beta carbon and the third carbon also called gamma carbon and the name beta oxidation it takes place in mitochondrial matrix and glycolysis takes place in cytoplasm then cholesterol synthesis takes place in endoplasmic reticulum and cytoplasm cholesterol synthesis occurs in endoplasmic reticulum and cytoplasm